In a recent presentation, I gave a simple explanation of why even a low false positive rate for a virus test could still mean a higher probability a person testing positive was a false positive. Now, for simplicity, I'd assume that everybody with the virus correctly tested positive. In other words, the false negative rate was 0%. In the discussion following that, somebody said that actually the false negative rate for the test was typically as high as 30% and wanted to know how things would change if this was taken into account. I said it would make it even more likely that a person testing positive was a false positive. They were surprised at this. So here I'll start with the same example and then show how it changes when we take into account the false negative rate. Because there's much misunderstanding about what the false positive rate really means and how to interpret it, it's important to clear this up. So let's suppose that there's a 1% false positive rate for testing asymptomatic. So in other words, only 1 in 100 asymptomatic people who don't have the virus will wrongly test positive. So suppose an asymptomatic person tests positive. What's the probability that they have the virus? Well, most people assume that the person does likely have the virus. But of course, it all depends on the underlying infection rate. Let's suppose that at the time of the test, one in every 1,000 asymptomatic people really has the virus. So imagine testing 10,000 asymptomatic people. Then about 10 really has the virus. So let's assume they all test positive. That leaves just under 10,000 who don't have the virus. And because of the 1% false positive rate, about 100 of those will wrongly test positive. And that means that out of the 110 in total who test positive, only 10 have the virus. So if you test positive, there's actually less than 10% chance that you have the virus, meaning the vast majority of so-called asymptomatic cases are false positives. Now that was a visual explanation of Bayes' theorem. But what if there's a 30% false negative rate? In other words, 30% of people with the virus wrongly test negative. Then it's still the case that about 10 of the 10,000 has the virus, and it's still the case that about 100 of the others will wrongly test positive. The difference now is that about three of those with the virus will wrongly test negative. So about three of these won't show up as positives. So we now have seven out of 107 who test positive, who really have the virus. That means there's just a 6.5% chance that a person testing positive has the virus. Or equivalently, the probability of a person testing positive is a false positive is now 93.5%. So taking account the false negative rate, this means that there's even a greater probability a person testing positive is a false positive. We miss a few true positives, but a far greater number who test positive are false positives. Now, logically, if you think about it, this does make sense because at the extreme, if, for example, the false negative rate was 100%, then nobody with the virus would test positive, meaning 100% of the positives would have to be false.